Welcome to Piece by Piece, a business podcast by Lumbermans. In today's episode, a discussion about building customer relationships. Here's Sean Montague and Ryan Terpstra. There are a lot of other distributors out there yep. that handle billing materials. There is a high level of competition in the Midwest. What I keep hearing and what I've heard ever since I've shown up here from our customers when I'm out in the field or from our team that maybe has worked in other areas of the industry is that Lumberman's is different. And you can hear that and then you can actually see that. Mm -hmm. How is Lumberman's different? We're not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. So I just want to... I want to humbly state that that we're not we're not perfect. We fail a lot. You know, when, when you grow business the way we have we have had the last few years, f- failure is inevitable. So there's times that we uh, make a mistake, um, respond to that mistake the right way. But but to answer your question, we fundamentally believe in two things. One is expecting great results, achieving great results, and two is caring for other people. And whether that's with our employee owners, our vendor partners, or our customers, we we fundamentally believe that those two things can be achieved at the same time. There are companies out there who can do one, but not the other. It's an either or for them. And some examples could be, because uh, I've worked for companies like that, where they expect great results at the expense of their employees or employee owners. Or they expect great results through their vendor relationships at the expense of their vendor. Or they uh, want to have great results, but it's at the expense of the customer. We, th- we believe that you can do both things. You can care for your employees, you can care for your vendor partners, you can care for your customers and care for their business, uh, and you can achieve great results uh, with both of those things. So finding win-win scenarios, I mentioned that earlier, is really critically important in this. Those two things continue to be uh, our, our North Star as we, as we move into the future. All right, so we have a team assembled. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Now, bringing that team to the customers. uh, For us, as a distributor, we have a lot of different folks that we do business with, and it's all literally all over the map. So they have different needs. They have different products that they carry. You could say that no one is quite the same when it comes to the folks that we do business with. So how do you build relationships with that wide of a variety of clientele? Understanding, great question by the way, but understanding who provides value, who defines value is really important. And I say that because I think most times the person selling the product, in this case Lumbermans, the the distributor to the dealer, to the customer, it's not up to us to define value to the customer. The goal is to help uh, understand what value is for them by asking them and getting to know them. And that's not a one person job, by the way. It's not a, just send the outside sales rep into that customer's facility. And this isn't just building materials distribution. This is in general, um, in my opinion, I, you know, I've sold a lot of things through a lot of industries and, you know, something that a, a light bulb flipped for me many years ago. I used to think that I knew what was best for the customer. I, I don't until I ask them a few questions and I listen to the things that they need and then I provide solutions for them. And uh, that go back to that, it's not a one person job. We as leaders in this organization are, are very customer facing. We have to be. The market moves fast, like, like what's, what's going on out there changes every single day. And so we have to be involved with our customers. We have to layer on relationships with our customers and continue to have them define value for us. And that value changes. You know, in fact, I can think of a specific situation where a customer six or seven years ago 
what was important to them is no longer important to them. It's changed. Mm-hmm. And there's some conversations recently that have uncovered that change. And if, if we weren't constantly having those conversations, we wouldn't know. And we would be thinking we're doing a good job for them. And, and we might not be. So how do you get your team to build the relationships that are necessary to know what your customer needs? Because there's a couple ways you can operate. You can be an order taker yeah. and show up and say, hey, what do you want today? Yeah. Or you can go in there and say, hey, how can we help you today? How do you build those relationships with the customers so that that, that communication line is open? Yeah, it's, it, starts with, it starts with just your, your mindset. Um, and there's a famous author that talks about uh, the difference between being a time teller or a clock builder. And we, we recently had a meeting with our group, actually the entire company, and we talked about the differences between the two. And being a time teller is kind of what you just outlined. Like walk in, uh, make sure everything's good, right? Uh, leave, take the order here or there. And you're never really influential in, in their business or their relationship. And look, I mean, there may be people who watch this and say, well, that, that is your guy. That is, that is Lumberman's. Like that, my Lumberman's rep is a time teller. And I'm telling you, we're not perfect. We don't have it figured out. So, so, so I, I, I want to humbly state that we still have room to grow. But fundamentally, we believe that we need to continue to, to work with our team to make sure that they are a clock builder. And what that means is they have to be part of the customer's business. They have to become influential in the customer's business. And the only way to do that is be consistent, be persistent, continue to spend time with them. And I'll, I'll share this with you. Uh, I was once told by a customer, treat me like the customer you want me to be, not the customer that I am. That blew my mind when, when they said this. This was many years ago. And that changed a lot for me. It was a, it was a pivot moment for me uh, as a salesperson at that time and a sales leader, so on to this day. And if you, if you think about it, treat the customer like the one you want them to be, not the one that they are. Many times, we only give a customer the experience that we think they deserve based off of how much they buy from us mm-hmm. or how they respond to our visits and things like that. And if we're doing that, uh, we're broken, in my opinion. Yeah. And it's really hard to, to do those things. But So I have heard something from you. And in a world where you know margins are pretty important. This can sometimes be scary to hear from some, but you have told your team, find a way to say yes. What does that mean when you're dealing with customers, high competition in the marketplace, trying to gain market share? What does it mean to find a way to say yes? Yeah, um, there's a strategic answer to that and a tactical answer. The tactical answer is as simple as, uh, a customer calls in and says, do you have this in stock? And you say no and they hang up and they go buy it somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Uh, Whereas you could say, do you have this in stock? Unfortunately, I don't, but I do have these in stock. Uh, What kind of project are you working on? And would these work for you? That's it. It's it's literally that simple. I think the strategic answer, and and it spreads across every area of our business, including warehouse and delivery and order fulfillment and, and so on, is we cannot manage each transaction in a vacuum. We cannot think of, are we making enough money on that one particular order with that one particular delivery? It's really about every PO is a privilege. Every purchase order is a privilege for us to service that business. And just because they need that one item and they need it now, and we're gonna find a way to get it to them, and it might cost us a little extra money to get it to them. It's really important for that customer that they get it because they have a customer who's waiting for it, because they have a homeowner who's waiting for it. Um, And we've all been that homeowner before. We've been been on that side of the equation. So 
uh, yeah, find a way to say yes within reason, right? Like, I would rather we rein our people in and, and they call us for these wild uh, approvals that we maybe have to say no to versus they just say no to everything. And they're like, no, I'm not, can't do that, can't do that, can't do that. Maybe we can't, maybe we can't and maybe that's right, but uh, we have to advocate for our customers. Thanks for tuning in. On our next episode, we'll talk about developing and leading a sales team across different markets. This has been Piece by Piece, a business podcast by Lumbermans.